So you may have noticed, superheroes dominate pop culture today. In particular, the silver screen. Five of the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time are MCU movies alone. Obviously, The Avengers Reign Supreme is the most profitable team of heroes of all time. But what about individual heroes? What single hero could bring in the most money at the box office? Well, I'm here to answer that question in the most accurate way possible. I'm ranking what hero movies averages the highest profit. Now, I'm basing this on profit, not box office gross, and I've even adjusted for inflation since some of these movies date back to the 90s, 80s, and even the 70s. And some criteria I set was that there had to be at least two films made on the hero. Sorry, Green Lantern. That's beautiful. And finally, I'm not going to include any low budget films or straight to DVD movies, and I'm only counting live action films. Okay, let's get into this. Starting off at number 10 is The Hulk. Now, they've attempted to make two Hulk films. Neither were very good. 2003's Hulk was made by Universal and was really bad. The movie where one of the biggest action scenes in the movie was a raged out Hulk punching dogs in their junk is bound to be a failure. Honestly, who thought that was a good idea? And the second was 2008's The Incredible Hulk. I feel like many people forget that 2008 Hulk is actually an MCU film. And I'm guessing Marvel is also trying to forget that this is one of their movies. It doesn't look or feel like any other movies in their universe and it certainly didn't make as much as any of the other MCU films did. Hulk sits at last place for box office returns for Marvel, by a lot, only making $265 million. The film was a disaster, the script wasn't even finished when they began filming. Altogether, the two films a day would only average a profit of $146 million each. Number 9 brings in our first DC hero, with the Man of Steel, Superman. The first Superman film was released in 1978 and had record-breaking success. When you factor in inflation, the movie would have made nearly $1.2 billion today. That success ushered in another three films by Christopher Reeves. Since then, they've made two more solo Superman films, but none reaching the success of the original. Today, on average, Superman movies would make a total profit of $375 million each. Slashing his way to number 8 is Wolverine. All three solo films are portrayed by Hugh Jackman, who does a great job encapsulating this anti-hero struggles. Although his first solo outing in 2009's X-Men Origins was a bit of a flop. The CGI was clearly not ready for his claws, and then there's that cringy scene as he walks away slowly from an explosion. Although Jackman's final take on the character was by far his best in the film Logan, loosely based on the Old Man Logan comic. This gritty, violent version of Wolverine is much closer to how he's portrayed in the source material. Logan's three films today would average a profit of $383 million each. Number seven goes to the MCU's Ant-Man. Ant-Man is Marvel's least profitable character that they've had complete control over. And I'm just assuming that a lot of Ant-Man success is largely just due to the fact that people love the MCU. Although I personally like Paul Rudd's take on the character. You only do so much with a superhero whose power is from a suit someone else made, and that suit can only shrink and grow in size. His two movies made $1.14 billion at the box office, and would average a profit of $450 million each today. Shocking his way to our number six spot is Thor. Chris Hemsworth's Thor has had three films, with only one of them being able to be a standout film. The first two films were good, not great, despite the insistence of Dutch angles in the first and the forgettable plot of the second. Loki was more of a highlight than Thor himself. Hemsworth was about to turn in his hammer and retire from the role till they brought in a new director and a new take on the character in Thor Ragnarok, and this change made a huge difference. The third film nearly brought in as much as the first two combined, with $854 million at the box office. Today, Thor's films would make an average profit of $462 million apiece. Number five goes to the first Avenger himself, Captain America. Captain America being this high on the list doesn't really feel right. Now, I like the character, but clearly the one thing that jumps Captain America so high on this list is Captain America Civil War, which was far from a solo Captain America movie, basically just another Avengers movie with a different title. Civil War brought in $1.15 billion at the box office, although Cat's first debut made the second lowest amount at the box office of any MCU movie, only beating out the Hulk. Winter Soldier was able to bring in $714 million, which is crazy considering that $714 million still puts you on the bottom half of MCU box office successes. Today, the average cat film makes $611 million in profit. Who does the number four spot go to? Who? The Batman. That's right, the Batman. The only other DC character on this list. Batman's placement on this list also feels a little strange, but in this case, it seems like he should be a lot higher. Christopher Nolan's Batman movies were a huge success. Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises brought in over three billion alone even with the decision to make Bane sound like a cartoon character. It would be extremely painful. Even Michael Keaton's take on Batman was a hit too, bringing in nearly 700 million, and that was back in the late 80s and 90s. 
However, we unfortunately can't forget those two mid 1990s Batman movies Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Let's kick some ice. If you could erase these movies from existence, like George Clooney wants, then Batman would be first on this list by a mile. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin is just a highlight reel of what you shouldn't do in superhero movies or really in any movie ever. I vividly remember watching Batman and Robin in theaters when I was a little kid and thinking when Batman and Robin transformed into hockey players using a diamond as a puck, I remember thinking, wow, this is really dumb. Enough about Batman's failures. At least five of the seven Batman movies are classics. Great movies. In today's market, Batman movies average a profit of $675 million each. Our number three spot goes to everyone's favorite Merc with a Mouth, Deadpool. No, not that version. The one that people actually want to remember. Hey, it's me. Don't scratch. Deadpool was an actual surprise success. The first Deadpool film only had a budget of $58 million and was able to bring in $783 million at the box office. Even the sequel had a relatively small budget as far as superhero movies go, with only $110 million and was able to bring in nearly the same exact amount as the first, for $786 million. Ryan Reynolds plays the character perfectly, and it will be interesting to see what Disney allows him to get away with with their third installment. The movie obviously downplays or hardly even touches on the fact that Deadpool has a serious mental illness, like in the comics, but that's understandable. The great movies are definitely not for kids, but these movies would average a profit of $705 million today. Getting down to our number two spot is The Man Who Started It All, by which I mean the MCU, Iron Man. Everybody loves Robert Downing Jr.'s take on Iron Man. Iron Man with RDJ made the MCU what it is today, starting with just scraps. With a box of scraps! Iron Man has had three solo films that combined made over $2 billion at the box office, and he has appeared in six other MCU films. The MCU really made Robert Downey Jr. work for his money, and he did a great job, and he made a whole lot of money too. During his tenure, it is estimated that he made $400 million from the MCU. Iron Man movies make an average profit of $723 million apiece. Before we get to the number one spot, I wanted to do an honorable mention, which is The Punisher. Oof, The Punisher's two films have made a whopping average of zero dollars for their studios. 2004's Punisher was highly anticipated, had an all-star cast, but was a commercial failure. 2008's Punisher Warzone was even worse and lost $15 million at the box office, erasing the small earnings from the first film. Okay, so now let's get into the number one spot, and no one should be surprised, it goes to the most popular character in all of Marvel, Spider-Man. There has been seven Spider-Man movies starring three different actors. Simply put, people just enjoy watching Spider-Man. Even the two movies starring Andrew Garfield both made over $700 million at the box office, which is pretty good considering The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a bad movie. Garfield plays a lighthearted goof, but then they throw in the Green Goblin who looks like they stole straight out of my nightmares. And can anyone tell me why Electro's teeth were straightened when he was electrocuted? It doesn't make any sense. It makes evil Peter Parker and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 look Oscar-worthy. But even the bad Spider-Man movies aren't that bad. Sam Raimi did a great job, Considering his first Spider-Man movies came out nearly 20 years ago, when you factor in inflation for all three movies, they all would have made over a billion dollars. Tom Holland's two movies have combined for two billion at the box office. Spider-Man is just a beloved character. He resonates with adults and kids. He really is a global icon, up there with Superman and Batman, and I'm sure his movies will continue to bring in tons of money. The average profit from a Spider-Man movie is $780 million. That's gonna wrap up the list and this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.